I'm David Hickathier. I'm the founder and CEO of Ant Culture, uh, headquartered here in the old Waterworks building. Thank you for joining us this morning. Glad the rain is holding off. Ant Culture is a uh, design firm focused on solving uh, broken realities. We focus on looking at framing these realities, reframing these realities, and then redesigning new ones, uh, one experience at a time. Thankful that I could share uh, the building we purchased here two years ago with you guys this morning. Uh, we have 80 folks, uh, designers, software engineers, and strategists. And I have to say that uh, a year ago, the problems that we worked on uh, seem a lot different than the ones today. Although I think the reality is it took a global uh, shared experience to see the differences uh, in the communities surrounding us. So we're very excited about the, uh, the power of design and how we can leverage it to uh, change some of the realities around us day by day. And I think a big part of that is how we govern. And so a part of that uh, this morning here is as Governor Wolf looks at making uh, life better for the employees of small businesses throughout the state by uh, hopefully creating some new uh, sick leave for these individuals, uh, we're hopeful that we can see some change there at the government level. So we're thankful for the work that he's done so far uh, through this uh, strange and, and odd 2020 and are hoping that uh, we'll continue to take action to uh, make these realities even better as we go into 2021 for the folks that matter most, uh, which is uh, the people in Pennsylvania that really need help as we go through this time period. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to the governor and uh, hope to learn more about what he's, uh, what he's doing here in the state of Pennsylvania. Governor? Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And, and uh, I, I appreciate your allowing us to, to be here with you today. And, and you're right, the, the world has changed a lot in the last few months. We, we've learned a lot. And one of the things that we've learned uh, is that, that in, in our system, uh, we, we have some weaknesses. There's some areas that we could do a better job. Uh, and I think the pandemic has exposed some of those weak areas. And one of them uh, comes in the area of paid sick leave for, for workers. That's in the forefront right now. And I think the COVID-19 pandemic has pointed out how much work we have to do. Um, the absence of paid sick leave has caused employees who have felt unwell to carry the virus, this very contagious virus, into their workplace and infect numerous other coworkers and sometimes even customers. Our legislature, I'm asking them to act as soon as possible, therefore, to pass paid sick leave for all Pennsylvania workers. And here's an interesting fact. Apparently, approximately 42% of American workers lack a single paid day off, not for sick pay, not for vacation, not for anything. And that means if they don't work, they don't get paid, nothing. And if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're probably going to show up, even if it means you're contagious, even if it means you're going to make somebody else sick. Back during the H1N1 flu crisis, there were an estimated 7 million people who caught the virus from their coworkers. I think most of us can agree we don't want to be around a sick coworker. And employees who aren't worried about losing pay or their job are more, are more likely to do the responsible thing, and that is stay home when they're sick. Because when one, one worker carries an illness into the workplace and infects their coworkers, the entire workplace suffers. So this is a productivity issue. So when that happens, because you don't have paid sick leave, you come to work when you're sick, you infect your fellow workers. Instead of having one worker ill now, that company is dealing with multiple call-offs with sick employees. And sick employees, I mean, let's face it, they're not as productive, even when they show up. In fact, the Amer American economy loses $160 billion annually due to illness and employees who come to work while they're sick. That's not the cost of sick pay. We've seen entire businesses close due to the COVID-19 spreading among staff. We saw that was one of the things we dealt with uh, in the early days, especially of the pandemic. So if we want to prevent illnesses like COVID-19 from spreading widely and threatening our workers and businesses, we need to require paid sick leave for all employees. This is what companies who recognize that they couldn't afford to lose out in productivity, this is what they did during the, the pandemic. So we need to act, and we need to act quickly. 
I'm, and I'm calling on the legislature to do that. Senate Bill 13 is the Healthy Employee Act, uh, and House Bill 169 is the uh, Healthy Workplace Act. Where's, where's my, right here, right? This is your two options that the General Assembly can act on now. These are two options, and there, there are many others that would provide Pennsylvanians with this critical benefit. The workers, the point is, should not have to choose between their job and their health, especially during this pandemic. It's time for the legislature to fix this problem that has been exposed during this pandemic. Again, many businesses like Dave's are already recognizing the importance of healthy, healthy workers and, and the, the, the effect of healthy workers on their bottom lines. Here at Ann Culture, workers are encouraged to take time off if they're unwell or to work from home to avoid spreading illnesses around the office. Other employers found during the pandemic, if somebody came to work and they said, do you have somebody who's sick at home? Should you be here or should you be at home? It was a lot easier to make the case to maybe stay home, self-quarantine for two weeks if there was paid time off, if there was paid family leave. If they didn't have it, it was very, very hard to convince workers to stay home. As a father, I can attest to the demands and the exhaustion that, that come with parenting. So in addition to staying home when you're sick, we need to have parental paid parent leave for both the husband and the wife, for both uh, man and woman, father and mother. Beginning October 15th, eligible Commonwealth employees who are new parents will be given the option to take up to six weeks of paid parental leave. And again, that includes both mothers and fathers. And it can be taken after birth, adoption, or foster placement. I hope paid parental leave becomes universal across Pennsylvania through legislation. I'm doing what I can. Meanwhile, uh, in the administration and the executive branch of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. But I want parental leave to become universal across Pennsylvania because we need to get every worker in our Commonwealth paid sick leave again so we can prevent the, the spread of illness. We need to make sure that we recognize the joint responsibility of mothers and fathers with uh, parental leave. So parental leave and sick pay, the health of every Pennsylvanian is at stake if we don't curb the spread of COVID-19 through our businesses. And our economy is at stake if we don't stop COVID-19 from causing productivity losses and business closures. It's time for Pennsylvanians to get to the, the, the benefits they need, and it's time for the legislature to put Pennsylvania's health first and pass paid sick leave. So now I'm going to turn this over to Senator Vince Hughes, who has a lot more to say about this. <laughs> Senator Hughes. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, sir. Wash my hands, Governor. I'm just you know, all right? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's um, first. I want to thank Governor Wolf uh, for not just stepping up and and uh, supporting uh, legislation uh, like the legislation that's offered here, but but I want to thank Governor Wolf for using utilizing the power of his office, the power of his administration to change the tone and change the conversation uh, and to be a support uh, for the workers that are within his sphere. And I thank you, Governor. We appreciate that, uh, leading by example. Uh, Governor Wolf mentioned uh, Senate Bill 13, and I'm just going to briefly talk a little bit about what's in that package. But there are other packages which will be discussed uh, later on in this, in this press conference. The Healthy Employee and Healthy Workplace Act, creates a mandatory employer-paid sick leave policy in Pennsylvania. Leave must be paid at the same rate of pay as the employee's hourly wage. Under the legislation, each employer has to provide a minimum paid sick leave policy for diagnosis, care, or treatment of an existing health condition, diagnosis, treatment, care, counseling, or other assistance, for a physical, mental, or emotional injury suffered by the employee or an employee's family member due an act due of abuse or sexual violence, a public health or public safety emergency involving the employee or the employee's family member. Employee's family members include a child, stepchild, or legal ward, regardless of the age or dependency status of the child a biological adopted or foster parent, step-parent or legal guardian of an employee or the employee's spouse, 
a spouse or domestic partner, a grandparent, a grandchild, or sibling. Employers must offer paid sick leave beginning after the 30th day of employment of the employee, and it shall be accrued at a rate of one hour for every 30 hours worked. And there's more. Employees may carry over up to 10 days of accrued sick leave from a previous year. Employee, employers must limit, may, excuse me, employers may limit the use of sick day leave to seven days a year. And there's more. The point I think we want to make as I read through some of this is that if we adopt this policy, Pennsylvania will be one of the leaders in the nation in terms of thoughtful, responsible, meaningful, compassionate, paid sick leave programs in the nation. And that's what we want. We want Pennsylvania to be the leader that it was, this state was created to be and this policy will put in place. We have found, as the governor said, we have found uh, through the pandemic that has revealed in clear and stark terms the reality of low-wage workers in this state and in this nation. Eighty percent of low-wage workers have no paid leave policy. Eighty percent of low-wage workers, and we're talking about the individuals, child care workers, health care workers, retail workers, food service workers, all of these individuals who we could not do without any day and every day, but it especially became clear in the pandemic. Eighty percent of them had no child had no sick leave program. It is time, as revealed to us from this pandemic, it is time to jettison this state forward, and it is time for us to embrace all workers in Pennsylvania, no matter what their circumstance is, no matter what their economic situation is. It's time for us to embrace them with the policies that make sense for their own health, makes sense for the health care of their fellow employees, and makes sense for the broader community. In one of my first jobs, there was a sign on the wall that said, if there's dignity in all work, then for all workers. And I repeat that. If there's dignity in all work, there must be dignity for all workers. A comprehensive, thoughtful, meaningful, paid sick leave program provides the dignity that every worker in this commonwealth deserves to have. And I thank the governor for stepping up and standing up on this day, advancing his support for this initiative and all other comprehensive paid sick leave programs uh, that are being discussed here. It is time. It is time. We can wait no longer. We should wait no longer. No worker should be confronted with, I don't feel good today, but I have to go to work even though I know I'm going to be contagious and get someone else sick. They should not be confronted with that. They should be get, get, given the opportunity to heal, get themselves healthy, and get their community safer and stronger as a result. Without any further ado, I'm going to ask someone who knows intimately about the health care of working people uh, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, uh, Senator Maria Collette. Senator Collette. Hi, everyone. Morning. Thank you, Senator Hughes, and thank you, Governor Wolf, for including paid sick leave as one of your legislative priorities for the fall. As a prime sponsor of Senate Bill 580, which is the Family Care Act, I am painfully aware that even before the COVID crisis, and as you've heard Governor Wolf and my colleague Senator Hughes say, more than 80 percent 
of hardworking Pennsylvanians had no form of paid medical leave to care for themselves or a loved one without fear of losing their jobs. And our small businesses, the backbone of our economy, were struggling to retain good employees. Implementing paid family medical leave to help working families and small businesses makes common sense. We held a robust and productive hearing on this bill back in January. We expected to spend the next several months negotiating the bill language and working to persuade our more reluctant colleagues of the bill's viability and necessity. None of us could have predicted what lie ahead. If the extreme hardships faced by Pennsylvania's families and small businesses over the past six months haven't persuaded my colleagues of the value of paid family medical leave, I don't know what will. We've spent these months putting Band-Aids on bullet holes to help families and small businesses try to survive. But now, bigger, systemic changes are required to lift Pennsylvania up and help its people and businesses recover. With the governor's backing, I'm optimistic that our legislature can come together in support of a program like the Family Care Act, which already has bipartisan and bicameral support to do just that. Thank you so much. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Representative Mike Schlossberg. Still struggling with the new routine of taking off your mask and hand sanitizing. Good morning, everybody. And thank you all very much for being here today. Thank you, Governor, Senator Hughes, Senator Collette, and Senator Ivino. I also want to make sure we acknowledge to my House colleagues, Representatives Flynn and Malagari. We know that the coronavirus did not create the need for paid family sick leave for working people. But the coronavirus did finally lay bare another part of our social safety net that has been bursting at the seams for years. Paid sick leave has always been the right thing to do. But for far too long, we've let billionaire special interests tell us that the bottom line counts more than people's health. The truth, as always, is that taking care of workers is also good business. What happens when that single mom who's been working in a grocery store is exposed to the virus and is told to stay home and quarantine for 14 days? What happens to her bank account, which is already strained from living paycheck to paycheck? What happens to her family? Right now, that worker has to choose. Does she protect the public health or does she keep her job? We have heard a lot over the past few months about essential workers. Opponents of paid sick leave are also usually the ones who argue that every worker is essential. That is a perfectly valid argument to make, if it's one backed up by public policy. You can't tell a worker that they are essential and then tell them that their health is irrelevant. Our workers count just as much as the workers of 10 other states that have already enacted some sort of paid sick leave. In those states, it didn't hurt the bottom line. It was long before COVID-19 when House and Senate Democrats introduced the Healthy Employee, Healthy Workplace Act. And we're proud to stand together with our governor and fight for paid family sick leave. We'll keep fighting. It's part of our plan for Pennsylvania. But the bill has been sitting in committee since April 2nd without any sort of committee hearing. It is time for the Republicans who control the House and Senate to do the right thing and bring this legislation up for a vote. The Healthy Employee, Healthy Workforce Act protects workers who choose or who are required to stay home and get better faster, allowing them to return to the job healthy in a shorter period of time. This act protects the rest of staff who won't get infected by a sick person that can't afford to take time off. This act protects families who need to use time to take care of a spouse, child, or parent. How can any of us possibly expect a worker to operate at their peak knowing that they have a sick child at home? The Healthy Employee, Healthy Workplace Act protects the profit margin because those workers staying home to get better don't infect an entire store or office of workers and customers. Plus, having a standard law covering the entire state makes it easier on companies with multiple offices, saving them administrative costs, and creating a level playing field for all businesses. COVID-19 didn't create the need for paid family sick leave, but it did highlight the massive inequities in our society. Those who need the most get the least. Now, all that being said, I still have faith that in the long run, we're going to get this right. If we have seen any constant throughout American history, it's that crises create moments to fundamentally alter the stakes of our world. At this tragic time, it's important that we keep a sense of historical context in mind. 
The Revolutionary War gave us the United States Constitution and created the vision and foundation for one of the world's leading democracies and keepers of freedom. The Civil War released millions from bondage. The economic abuses of the Gilded Age led to the progressive era that gave us basic workforce protections. The Great Depression and war on poverty led to the creation of a social safety net that has kept millions alive and given those same people the chance for a better life. The deaths of 180,000 Americans, 7,600 Pennsylvanians, and rising is a tragedy that will always be with us. But to quote a politician who I truly admire, from pain comes purpose. As we emerge from the ashes of COVID, we can create a society that cares for its most, most vulnerable in a better way. We are a better society when we learn from tragedies, rather than confine our mistakes to history's dustbin. Part of our long-term moral and economic recovery is the enactment of paid family sick leave, and it is for those reasons I am proud to lend my support and stand with the governor today, along with my legislative colleagues. Thank you very much, and with that, it's my honor to introduce Senator Iovino. Good morning. I am very pleased to be here this morning with um, some of my fellow colleagues from the General Assembly. I'd like to thank um, Dave Hickthier for hosting us um, here at Ad Culture this morning. And thank you to Governor Wolf for your leadership and for, and for inviting me to join you here today. The pandemic has highlighted the ways in which our safety nets were not and currently are not sufficient for providing the security and the flexibility that working families and businesses need in a modern economy. Perhaps no issue greater embodies that than paid sick leave. No employee should have to choose between taking care of a sick family member and keeping their job, and no employer should have to choose between the health of their business and being loyal to their workers. That was true before the pandemic hit. But now, as we work to build a lasting and fair recovery for Pennsylvania, paid family and sick leave has become an absolute necessity for the health of our working families and our economy as a whole. As you've heard, there is broad bipartisan agreement that our Commonwealth needs a more stable and predictable way of supporting productivity at work while also allowing workers to care for themselves and their loved ones. 79% of Pennsylvanians support providing paid family and medical leave to all working families. 79%. There are not many policies that enjoy such broad support. Our friends and partners in labor, like SEIU, which represents healthcare workers and many other frontline workers, they've been long pushing for these protections. And these essential protections are smart for both the employee and for the business. In the long run, businesses understand the financial implications of keeping someone on the books instead of dealing with the cost of high turnover. But we understand this is not just about the bottom line and spreadsheets. It's about real human stories, about people like Kathleen, a constituent of mine who lives with and cares for her 92-year-old mother. Kathleen worked a full-time job, but in order to avoid bringing the virus home and infecting her high-risk elderly mother, she decided back in May to take unpaid leave under the Family and Medical Leave Act. She was ineligible for paid leave under the Federal Families First Coronavirus Response Act, Response Act because her company employs over 500 people. And Kathleen did not qualify for unemployment compensation because her company was classified as essential. Our system in its current structure let Kathleen fall through the cracks, and her story is all too common. Across Pennsylvania, parents with sick children, those with elderly relatives, they are struggling to find a way to provide their loved ones with compassionate care while also providing them with a roof over their heads and food on the table. 
That's a choice that no Pennsylvanian should have to make, and they don't have to. As my colleagues have pointed out, there is bipartisan and bicameral legislation in the General Assembly right now that I'm proud to co-sponsor, the, the Family Care Act. It would provide a new level of economic security for working families without adding a new burden to small businesses. We can do this. We can rise to the challenge and together build a more fair and sustainable economy for us and for our children. I am committed to that. I look forward to working with my colleagues across the aisle and across the Capitol to get a bill to the governor's desk as soon as possible. Again, thank you to Governor Wolf for inviting me to be part of this today, and I'll invite um, one of my colleagues from across the Capitol, um, Representative Malagari. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to get this uh, words up and running on my phone. I have a paperless copy today. I wanted to thank, uh, first off, thank the whole team at Ann Culture for having us here. And to Governor Wolf, thank you so much. Senator Hughes, Senator Collette, Senator Ivino, Representative Schlossberg, Representative Flynn, really appreciate you bringing this initiative to the forefront for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I really do appreciate it. Even before this pandemic, our country was behind. Other industrialized nations, in terms of looking after working families, through provisions for family and sick leave. And with the global health crisis that we're currently in, it's become more apparent than ever that it's time we get caught up. Paid parental and sick leave is vital to keep families hard at work. It actually boosts productivity for employers, and, and for sick leave especially, it keeps us all safe and healthy. We should not be putting people in a position of having to choose between keeping themselves and others healthy. And keeping their job. We should not be forcing people with young families to return to work before they're physically or mentally ready just because they literally have no other option. Employers and companies should be supporting these measures already because actually they keep skilled and trained people in the workforce. Instead of businesses losing valuable time and money from constantly onboarding new employees, companies get to keep their best employees. Even when a health event affects them or a member of their family. The Harvard Business Review recently published that high staff turnover rates due to low wages and lack of paid leave undermines company profits. In short, paid leave makes good financial sense. Paid parental leave and sick leave provide stability and peace of mind to both businesses and working families, especially at times of uncertainty. So if you truly want to support family values, and if you want to support our economy, then you need to support paid leave for our hardworking families. I want to thank the governor. I want to thank Senator Collette for prime sponsoring the bill. And Senator Hughes, I want to thank my colleagues in the House. I urge my colleagues from the House and the Senate to pass this legislation, to make this a, a, an initiative that we can actually celebrate in a time of need. I, I absolutely applaud the governor for his efforts in in making sure that this gets done within the administration and, and where he has purview and where he can actually make a lasting change. So I appreciate that. And I'm going to hand this back over to Governor Wolf for some questions and answers. Thank you, Governor. So thank you again to all my colleagues, Senator Hughes, Senator Collette, Senator Ivino, Representative Flynn. Uh, Gary and uh, Mike, thank you very much. So all of us, and of course, Dave, thank you for, for hosting us here today. Really appreciate it. So now any of us will take questions. Any questions? Yes. 
few different proposals thrown out, both you know payroll contributions and employer-based contributions. Is there a particular structure that you would favor um, in terms of enacting some sort of paid sick leave policy? Yeah, I, I mean, the employer, I'm not sure, you said there's an employee-based? Uh, pay, payroll. payroll deductions. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I think this, this really ought to be a, 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 an employer-based thing. Uh, the, uh, this is the same thing as, as paying base compensation. I mean, I was in business up until five and a half years ago, and uh, I, I think uh, the turnover, uh, the uh, sick employees, uh, employees worried about family members, I mean, th these were things that, that were real expenses to, to my company. And I think this is the kind of thing that this is not a, an us versus them. This is, this is something that should benefit everybody. Um, so on the family leave policy that you have for the executive branch employees, is there any flexibility in that program this year um, or, you know, during the pandemic to allow families to, um, you know, take time off if they can't arrange child care or something like that? I guess just given all the new family obligations that a lot of workers have now, are you, like, can't, is the, the program that you're, that starts next month, will that really help for this specific moment? That's a good question. I mean, it, it starts like mid-October uh, is, is the, the target date. Uh, and the, the, the idea is to allow both mothers and fathers to, to take time uh, to care for uh, family members. Uh, so specific, the specifics of it still have yet to be worked out, but I think we, I want to be as expansive as I possibly can. Because I mean, right now it sounds like it's only for um families with a new child, whether it's a birth or an adoption or a foster placement, I guess, could it, could that be expanded to just, you know, Yeah, it's a good, that's general. a good, that, that's, that's a very good point. I, I think, I think that we have Family Medical Leave Act, the, the Federal F Family Medical Leave Act, but it's uh, not paid. And so what I'm proposing here is a paid parental uh, leave, but I think the expansion of that uh, into other areas is something that probably will, will, will follow. The, the truth is that employees now take time off from work, uh, and they do it by taking vacation time or other other uh, paid leave if they have it, uh, and uh, uh, or, or they they worry about their loved ones uh, while they're at work. In, in none of those cases uh, uh, does the productivity uh, benefit. So so we we really I think ought to be looking at how we can make. Uh, uh, for, for more family-friendly policies, uh, and I think starting uh, in the executive branch is a good good place to start. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, wh where are Republicans at on some of these proposals? Uh, is your administration in talks with them? Uh, I think you guys have probably a better sense of it. Do you want to? Yeah. Some contention. What are what are the negotiations that need to happen between you know now and when you can get this passed? I I, I think. Um, you should ask them why, why they're not moving the issue forward, because they control the General Assembly, and they should move the issue forward. I think also, um, in some of our pieces of legislation, there is bipartisan support. I think Representative Schlossberg mentioned that earlier, bicameral, bipartisan. Um, I think that the governor's initiative here, if I could be so bold to speak for him, <laughs> with him right there, all right? is the idea of raising the level of attention and focus on this issue um, uh, as we go into the fall session, we go into the fall season. Um, he's raising it uh, in this conversation, but he's also raising it in terms of enacting a program in government in the areas that he has direct control over. Um, and I think that's the, that's the reason why we're here, uh, to raise the level of the conversation, to let people know in Pennsylvania that somebody cares about their situation and somebody's focused on this situation and that what we want to do is bring what's being provided by this governor to all across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. If I could just get one more off topic for you, Governor. Um, this comes from uh, my colleague at WPSU. Um, with the situation that's going on uh, in terms of students returning to universities across the Commonwealth, um, do you think that universities, um, Penn State specifically, because that, they of course have been in the news a little bit more, are doing enough to keep surrounding communities safe, 
Um, will the, how will the state respond if there is you know, a gigantic surge come the fall like some people are expecting? Yeah, it's a good point. Temple just uh, decided for two weeks they're going to be 100 percent online, uh, I think, because they had a, uh, an outbreak. So that there's some, some concern. I think this could go two ways. I mean, obviously, with colleges and universities coming back right now uh, and K through 12 coming, right, coming back right now, uh, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Uh, could be a place, you know, this virus likes it whenever people congregate, so those are places where people do congregate. Uh, on the other hand, it could be a teaching moment. Uh, it could be exactly the, the, the right place for, for us to be to, to learn more about this disease and how we can actually fight it in, in a more responsible way. I'm, I'm hoping it's the latter, and I'm hoping that, that places like the University of Pittsburgh and, and Penn State uh, and Temple and, and all the higher institutions of higher education, that, that this is a moment where we, we actually sort of say, yeah, this is a new normal and we're, we're going to have to adjust to it. It's not the, the administration talking, it's that virus. And I think the same thing for, for schools. So um, I think it was one of the chance of one of the presidents of one of the big universities was saying, you know, the kids came back and, and they spent first hours talking about the virus. and the responsibilities and what the responsibilities of the, of the university is. And they went back to their rooms, cleaned the, the rooms, sanitized them, and got them ready, and then went out to a party. <laughs> so it's sort, of, sort of like, yeah, uh, is it, no, let's, let's, let's think about this. You know, is that really the, the right thing? That virus is out there waiting for you. Is that what you really want to do? And, and most of the students are saying, yeah, that's a good point. And, and let's, let's, let's rethink this. So, the, the, the old normal maybe isn't, isn't where we ought to be. And so given that, it, it could be that universities with the kind of responsible leadership I'm seeing across the, the Commonwealth might be exactly where we want our students to be. Is that a Mets hat you're wearing? I knew you were going to say something. Did you see that? What? OK, I have a question. How from dare you? <laughs> they had a bad weekend. <laughs> Um, I have a question from my coworker Dennis Owens. Um, a number of Republican lawmakers have questioned what state workers have been doing since the pandemic began. How many under your direction are working from home? What oversight are they getting? And how can you ensure they are putting in a full day's work? That's a good, good, quite fair question. The, the, uh, the, we are finding a big increase in, in employees who are doing telework. And we've done a lot of things from an IT point of view through the Office of Administration to, to make that possible. And, and one of the interesting things, obviously there's some jobs where you just have to be there. You have to, to show up. Uh, and I think uh, ultimately we're going to want to make sure that people who can telework still show up at the office from, from time to time. But we're finding that, that where we actually have metrics, um, we're seeing I increases in, in productivity. Uh, and it's something that, that employees r really do like. And again, I saw that in my, my old company, that where we could do it, employees actually uh, work better uh, in, in many cases uh, from, from home. So um, we, we are following uh, up on that each of the supervisors is responsible for making sure that the, the work product uh, is up to, to snuff uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the uh, out, outcomes uh, are, are good. So I, I, I'm feeling pretty good about that. It's something that, that I check on. Uh, we have we used to have daily staff meetings in the you know like March, April, early May period. We went to twice a week staff meetings. We're now down to once a week staff meetings, and that's one of the issues that I check on every, every at every meeting. And lastly, real quick, um, <coughs> what is the cost of offering six weeks parental leave? And in the pandemic, can the state afford it? Yeah, the, the uh, it's it's interesting. Right now, uh, if someone really wants to take, and I'm not even going to talk about what the, the hidden costs might be of sick workers coming to work. How many people do they infect, especially when you have a contagious disease like this? But, but that aside, when somebody is that concerned about their family that they leave, uh, either for w without pay or just, just leave, that's a spot that, that is not filled. Uh, and it takes at least six to eight to sometimes 12 weeks to, to fill that spot if that person leaves permanently. At this point, we don't pay anything uh, for that. Uh, but we, we lose the productivity of, of, that, of that person. So uh, we, don't, we, we don't get the productivity under this system. Uh, we, we have in the budget the, uh, the money for that slot that goes unfilled for six, eight, 12 weeks. So 
we think, and this with the, the budget office uh, can give you more detail on this, but, but the thought is that the cost should be fairly minimal, if anything. Uh, f for elections, uh, any, uh, any progress in... My answers are too long, obviously. <laughs> Well, I got, I'll, I'll squeeze two in there. Um, any, uh, any progress uh, with election talks, and, and how confident are you that if changes are made to the, to the process, that counties will have enough time to actually implement them? Well, okay, let me answer the second one first. The, 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 the conversations we're all having with the, the uh, Republicans in the Senate and the House uh, recognize that, that you can't just wait until the last minute to do this. So we're talking now, and there's over two months to go until election day. Um, I, I'd say they're, they're going okay. Um, it, we, we, there's back and forth, and, and I think there's a real interest in, in having a, a, a conversation. It's not like, you know, once this is a one-sided uh, discussion. I, I have the sense that, that both parties Democrats and Republicans, there's some different ideas as to how we ought to proceed on this, but, but both parties really are interested in doing this. And part of the reason for that is because the county commissioners really want this to happen. That's a bipartisan group. Republican and Democratic county commissioners out there who are responsible for the elections in the 67 counties in Pennsylvania are really urging action uh, in the state Senate and the state House, Republicans and Democrats. And, for, and real quick, for indoor seating, what would it take for you to see to change or to loosen up some indoor seating restrictions as restaurants look ahead as it's getting a little colder, yeah. you know, they don't have the resources to have people right. sitting outside. What will it take to loosen that up? Yeah, I, I, I want to make sure that, that Pennsylvania, I think our focus right now ought to be getting our kids and our older students in higher education back to school uh, and back into a learning mode. Uh, and anything we do to take our eyes off that ball uh, is going to be a problem. So I think one of the things I'm looking, I'm going to be looking for is how, how are we doing in the back to school? I mean, this is the week, next week, where the schools, uh, most colleges are already back. Uh, and I think the next couple of weeks will tell the tale. Uh, and if we see real progress uh, in, in terms of the, the two things that I'm looking at, the case count per 100,000 and, and the uh, uh, positivity rate, um, you know, that seems to be steady right now. If, if, if that continues like that, that, that would be a good sign. Because I recognize we've got to get back to, to a point where, where uh, you know, uh, we, we live a life that is a lot more normal than the one we're living right now. Yeah, one, one more. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so the, the statewide <coughs> ban on evictions expires today. And yes. I know that we're here today because we're talking about how COVID spreads in workplaces. but. It also spreads really rapidly in cramped housing and shelters. And so are you worried about the expiration of that moratorium driving up COVID case counts in the next couple of months? And do you stand by your yeah. decision to not issue a new one? Yeah, uh, I am concerned. And no, I don't stand by my, my uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm continually concerned about, I might, the, uh, 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 I, I'm continually concerned about the, the, the end of, of that eviction. I mean, whether we do it this month or next month or October or December, at some point it goes away and people are going to be facing uh, a very unpalatable uh, issue of, of uh, eviction. So what I am urging the legislature to do as quickly as possible, uh, and I have proposed $200 million from the CARES Act, $100 million for eviction, $100 million for uh, cutoff of uh, utilities, uh, that, that, the, that the General Assembly work with me to, to make sure that money gets out. That's what I think we, we really need to be doing. Uh, eviction, uh, moratoria are great, but they come to an end. And, and you can extend it month by month by month. At some point, that ends. Uh, and I don't see it not ending uh, at some point. And uh, so uh, uh, that's why I'm, I'm calling for uh, this 100 million and 100 million uh, to be a, to be used of CARES Act money by the General Assembly. Are you going to issue a new moratorium today? Not today. You have to wait and see. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody.